Right, with the, all exam questions, we've got to kind of look through and look for key information. So here in this question, they're telling us that the exchange rate uh, from pounds to euros at this particular moment was one pound is the same as one euro twenty. So to get from pounds to euros, we're going to have to multiply. If we want to get from euros back to pounds, then we need to divide. So we would multiply by 1.2 to get from pounds to euros, and if we need to get back from euros to pounds, we would divide by 1.2. So the VAS is a completed table in preparation for drawing a conversion graph. So if we look at the rule, then it's telling us that to get pounds into euros, we multiply by 1.2. So 0 times 1.2 is 0, 10 times 1.2 is 12, and when you multiply by 10 you move the digits up one place value, so we did 10 times 1.2, and 15 times 1.2 is 18, uh, if you're not sure of that then sometimes 15 times 12 helps, so 15 times 2 uh, sorry, 15 times 10, 15 times 2, so 150, 15 2 is 30, 180, but we dealt with 12 rather than 1.2, so we moved this down one place value to become 18. And we can see a pattern going on here. This one's going up in 5s, this one's going up in 6s, so we suspect this will be 36, and we could check it 30 times 12. Well, three twelves are thirty-six, so we recognise that if we do thirty times one point two, it would be thirty-six. The question says uh, draw a conversion graph. Be really careful here. It's asking you for a graph, and graphs always have lines or bars or something's been drawn on, not just the crosses of the coordinates. So be really careful. You do finish off by drawing the line. So let's have a look. Um, so they're telling us not not. Um, because it's a conversion graph, there is a quick way of thinking about this. Conversion graphs start from zero, 0, and work your way up to the top value. It's a linear relationship, it's a simple multiply all the time by the same number. So we can get a quick way of doing this, it's not not, and then look at our biggest number in the table, it was 30 and 36. So if we go to 30, and up to 36. Again, with all graphs, look at the scale. So here we've got 10 little squares for 5, so each little square must be worth a half. 5 divided by 10 is a half. So 35, 35 and a half, 36. We ought to put a third point on just to uh, make sure our ruler lines up carefully and all the rest of it, and uh, just make sure we have plotted carefully. So I'm going to choose um, 15, went to 18. So 15, half, 16, 16 and a half, 17 and a half, 18. So then we get our ruler, and with all graphs, we make sure that we draw the line all the way across being really careful that we get the accuracy mark so we go all the way across the graph so that's the conversion graph drawn and then we look at the last part of the question it's asking um, Louise to change £250 into euros so again the conversion was to go from euros, uh, sorry from pounds to euros we had to multiply by 1.2 so 250 times 10, 250 times 2, so instead of 1.2 I'm doing 12, so 250, 250 times 10 is 2,500, and 250 times 2 is 500, we add those together we get 3,000, but we multiplied by 12 instead of 1.2, so we come back one place value so the answer would be 300. Now the thing to remember also as a check is that conversion graphs quite often you're expected to actually read from the conversion graph and they don't actually give you the conversion factor of 1.2 so if we think about this 250 well the conversion graph if we look at the bottom scale it had 25 and we should recognize that 25 is a factor of 250 
so 25 times 10 25 times 10 gives me 250 so if I find the conversion of a 25 I could just multiply it up by 10 so I can use the conversion graph to get that so 30 or I could have used the table because they did tell us that 25 pounds was worth 30 euros in the table as well so there's several ways to do this question so we knew that 25 was 30 so this was pounds so in euros it's 30 times 10 which is the same as we had before 300 so just kind of double checks so that we did get the right answer of 300 euros